Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Christopher Mitchell, also known as Kerm Martian. And today I would like to unbox the TI Innovator Hub for you and show you a little bit about it. If you've been around on Chemitech, you may have seen that we already posted one article about the TI Innovator, thanks to Sean Mirthsoft McFall. But I received this a few months ago, and it is long overdue for me to take a look at the Innovator, see what we can do with it, and hopefully in this and future videos and Chemitech articles, uh, explore how this can be used as a STEM teaching tool. So if you're not familiar with the TI Innovator Hub, it is a little gadget that lets you connect your calculator to electronics components, essentially. So it lets you do things like control motors and LEDs and read the state of switches, buttons, and sensors using your graphing calculator. If this sounds familiar, you may be, you may know of our article library, ARTICL, which lets you do something similar with Arduinos. But what TI has done is taken that concept and packaged it into something that can be used easily in the classroom. So without further ado, let's take a look. This is the TI Innovator Hub with TI Launchpad Technology. It uses a board that TI, the semiconductor company, sells uh, to help people learn how to use one of their microcontrollers. I also have the TI Innovator Breadboard Pack, which contains a breadboard and various components to let you do even more with electronics and your innovator. So I'm going to take this sleeve off the TI Innovator Hub box and open this up. If you've looked at my Twitter account, you know that I've opened this before, but I haven't actually really played with it other than to take the Innovator Hub apart. So we have a getting started guide. We have the same thing in French. We have a warranty and license agreement. Sorry, that was the license agreement. Here's the warranty. And here's what we have inside. So this is the main Innovator box itself, nicely wrapped in bubble wrap. And I'm going to take a look at my camera to make sure you can see what I see. Very good. So you can see this is the hub. It says TI Innovator Hub on it with TI Launchpad Technology and Texas Instruments. So inside this plastic cover on top is this Launchpad board, which has been plugged into various things inside. So on one end, there is this set of breadboard pins. You can connect wires to this or even directly connect components in order to control them with your calculator. There are three output jacks and three input jacks on the side of these that can be connected to a set of sensors that TI and others sell. And then at the top here, there's a brightness sensor, a little plug to connect uh, I2C, which is a type of communication bus devices, and a data port. This is how you can connect the device to your calculator. And if you want, there is also a way to add additional power. Ah, so you can see I omitted this power jack here. This lets you connect the hub to either a battery pack or to a wall charger to give the device extra power if you want to do things like control motors. So let's see what else we have in the box. We'll come back to this in a moment. There's also a standard uh, USB to wall power jack. Hopefully it's a little bit more reliable than some of the chargers that came with the TI-84 Plus C Silver Edition. I think they improved those for the TI-84 Plus CE. I know that quite a number of them used to fail for the TI-84 Plus C Silver Edition, which has now been essentially abandoned by TI in favor of its new slimmer cousin, the TI-84 Plus CE, which this one is the shiny new special edition gold version. Uh, it comes with a regular USB to micro USB cable. That's for connecting it to power. And it comes with other standard cables. So regular USB to mini USB. This is so if you want, you can connect the Innovator Hub to your own computer. You can actually control it with TI's emulation software. And a mini USB cable that lets you connect your calculator directly to the hub. So let us go ahead and do that now. So I don't think this is the right... Let's see, that should be the correct end there. And this should be the correct end here. And let us see what happens. I may have gotten those ends wrong. This says B, this says B. This end says A, so hopefully I got that right. Well, let me take these boxes away and let's do some testing now that we've unboxed this. I'm gonna check again to make sure you can see clearly. Hopefully you can read what's on my screen. So I believe that there are some new commands. This is OS 5.2 that I have on this calculator, OS 5.2.0.0035, which has special new commands to integrate with the Innovator Hub. So I'm going to create a new program. I'm going to call it 
blink. And in this program, I'm going to put an infinite loop. So I'm going to repeat until nope, get key equals, sorry, not equals, zero. So until somebody presses a key. And now I have a nice loop in here. And inside, I will try to blink the LED. So what we should do is instead of just guessing, let's take a look at this manual. I've already looked at it, but I will show you the relevant pages that will show us how to get started. So it talks about what the various things are on the innovator hub, what the cables and adapters and stuff that come with the hub are, how to connect it. So that's connecting it to a TI-84 plus CE and connecting it to a TI Inspire CX which I'm not gonna demonstrate in this video. I'll stick with the nice trusty 84 plus CE. And as I said, you can also connect it to a computer if you'd like. Now, there are a bunch of commands that we can use. So they're all gonna be send or get, which just like article, let you either send data to the device or get data from the device. There's also a couple of new commands like the wait command that didn't previously exist in TI Basic. So let's try this program right here. We're going to, instead of in a, a loop from one to 10, which would only blink the LED 10 times, we'll blink it infinitely in our repeat loop that I already started here. So we'll do send, set light on, wait one, send, set light off, wait one, and then that'll be our loop. So let me put this manual aside and type those commands in. So the first thing we need is that send, and you'll see that it is in the IO menu, which is a good place for it. IO means input and output, and this is certainly an input and output device. So now we need quotes. This is also a new feature that they added that you can send a string and not only send a string, but you can put variables inside the string. But that's not what we're doing here. We're just gonna have the literal letters send light on. And I see that there's a bit of an inconsistency in the manual. If you look closely, the program here has just set light on and then the quotes end. In this little screenshot here, it's probably hard to see from your perspective, but it says, set light, and then there's two spaces, and then on, and then an extra space before the quote. Let's assume that's not necessary here and just try it. Now we're going to wait. That should be in the control menu. Let's see. Unfortunately, this is going to throw off my touch typing a little bit. I'm used to program alpha C being menu. Now alpha D is menu because wait has been inserted there as alpha A. We will wait one. And then I see I made a typo here. Those of you who are playing, paying close attention probably caught that when I did it. And we will send set light off. And then finally, we will wait one again. Uh, that was alpha A, wait one. All right, now let us try running this program and see what happens. Aha! So the first thing that happened is the hub initialized itself, it looked like. And now this LED here is blinking. Let me make sure that you can see that. I'll put it a little closer so you can see it more clearly. So you can see that that little red LED there is blinking happily away. Now it should be turning on and then turning off every second. So one and a thousand, two and a thousand, three and a thousand, four and a thousand. Let's see if we can speed that up a little. Also, that's a nice dark red LED. I like that color. We will break this program and edit it. So let's see what happens if we do wait 0.2. So that should only wait 0.2 seconds, one fifth of a second. You can see it now blinks much faster. See that LED is blinking substantially faster now. Now there are other LEDs that we can control here, but let's try a sound test first. So we can do set sound, a frequency, time, and then a duration. So in this case, in this example that they've put down here, I'm gonna press clear, they'll use our get key. So let's make a new program called sound, sound. And we'll make it just do the command that they have there first and see what that does. So send, set, sound. Now the frequency, 440 hertz, time, two. Now I'm gonna assume that that means two seconds. So let's find out, sound. So that was a 440 hertz tone for two seconds. Excellent. And I noticed that there was a little white LED that blinked there. I wonder if that means the program has ended. Let's see if we can detect that with this program. No, it doesn't. Interesting. I wonder what that means. So let's try a loop here where we can do that repeatedly. 
Um, so we'll do another repeat, and this time I'm going to do repeat while not get key. So repeat while the output of get key is zero, and then repeat until the output of get key is not zero. And then after this, which I'm going to only make 0 0.5 seconds, hopefully it understands how to parse that, I will put another wait command, and I'll have it wait for five, 0 0.5 seconds. So this should sound tone for half a second, and then be silent for half a second. Let's see how that works out. No. And there's a good reason. There's not a good reason. Repeat until... Ah, repeat. Until get key, excuse me. There we go. And apparently this little LED here blinks every time a tone ends. I noticed that that doesn't seem to quite be a half second wait there. Let's see what happens if I change this. Uh, I suspect that the calculator may not be waiting for that command to complete. So that wait 0.5 is simultaneous, perhaps, with the sound sounding for 0.5 seconds. Let's see if that's the case. There we go. So it is, in fact, simultaneous. Once the calculator issues that command, it doesn't wait for it to complete. So if we did, ah, let's try something. Let's do set sound, and then let's immediately try turning an LED on. And we should see that the LED turns on well before that sound completes, which means we could actually do things simultaneously. So we could start a sound and then have a program start doing things at the same time. Like we could play sounds for a game we were making through the device without having to make the game stop while the device uh, made those sounds. So let's try send. Uh, set light on. Excuse me, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing the letters through the glare from the extra lighting I put on here to make sure you can see the subject. All right, let's try this again. Actually, I'm also going to remove the loop to make it even clearer what's going on here. So we won't have multiple iterations that are conflicting with each other. So you can see the LED turned on almost immediately after the sound started, not when the sound ended. Let me show you that again. Well, let me turn the LED off first. And I can do this from the home screen too, I assume. There's no reason it has to be inside a program. So I can do set light. And it's interesting to see that the device does not automatically turn off the LEDs when the program ends. That makes sense because the hub really shouldn't have a way of knowing that a program is running or not running. There we go. So we set the light off. Now watch closely. I'm going to hit enter once and then I'm going to hit enter again and look for how that LED turns on immediately when the sound starts. See, pretty close. There was like a quarter second delay, maybe. And then I'm going to set that light off again. Let me do one more thing before I end this video. Let me show you um, the RGB LED. So there's an RGB, a red, green, blue LED in here that can be manipulated. And if I look at the nice handy little manual here, you can see that we can set the color anywhere from 0 to 255. So it's something we can vary the brightness of using a technique called pulse width modulation. So we can set the red, green, and blue LEDs to zero, which means off, 255, which means full brightness, and then any integer in between zero and 255, which are shades of brightness or darkness. Now, I want to make this a little bit more interesting. I'm going to make it display random colors. So let me say colors. Now, um, this is going to be quite interesting because... I'm going to have to try something I haven't tried before with this new operating system version. I am going to have to figure out how to put a variable inside a string that we can then evaluate. If you'll bear with me, I am going to pause a moment, look up the proper syntax for this, and I'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back. I just checked the syntax, and here is how you use the eval command. So you have to put eval in the string, and the send command does something special where it will check the string before it sends it. It'll see eval around A, and it'll replace eval A with the value of eval, in this case, 440. So if we run this program, it'll do the same thing as before, except now we have the frequency here, so we can change this to 880, whoops, which is the next octave up, and you see it's a higher note. Now, we can use the same technique with our colors program. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pick a random integer between 0 and 255. We're going to make that our red color. 
Now we're going to do the same thing for random integer from 0 to 255, our green color. And now our random integer from 0 to 255. And that will be our blue color. Now, in order to set the LED colors to these, we'll have to do send set LED. Let me double check this. Sorry, color, color dot red to eval a, sorry, eval r, and then send set color dot green to eval g and finally send set color oops, dot blue to eval b now this should set our led to a random color so let's give this a try and this will be leds over here colors there we go. You can see it's picking random colors. Also, because of the way these colors have to be sent, it's doing three separate commands instead of setting all three colors at once. You can kind of see the colors all kind of fading in as it sends those three commands. So it sets the red, then the green, then the blue. So it kind of changes in three quick steps. Now what we can do is we can make a bit of a light show here by extending this a little bit. We can put this once again in a loop. So we will do repeat until we get a key. After this happens, we're going to wait one. Whoops, alpha A. Nope, program alpha A. Excellent, wait one, and N. So this is going to select a new color about once a second. There we go. And that's a program that you can try yourself. If you're curious about the code for this, I will put it in the Chemitech news article that I plan to attach to the description of this video, and that will link to this video. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching this video, watching me unbox the TI Innovator Hub. I'm looking forward to showing you more in future videos, including playing with the TI Innovator breadboard pack and showing you what's in there and what we can do with that. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave your comments if you have things that you would like to add about the TI Innovator Hub or questions you'd like me to ask, even experiments you'd like me to run. Of course, I hope you will consider subscribing if you would like to see the next couple of videos in this series about the TI Innovator Hub, including the Norland Research TI robot that I recently received, courtesy of Norland Robotics, that I'm looking to test out that actually uses the TI Innovator Hub to control a robot. Um, thanks a lot, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.